Chris Garza of Suicide Silence. Welcome to the show. Thank you for making time for this. I'm very excited. I just realized I should have worn my Suicide Silence shirt because I am not afraid to fan out for Suicide Silence. Most bands, you know, you don't <laughs> want to be the guy wearing the band's shirt to the show, but I am such a huge fan that I would I would fan out. So now I, I feel like I should have worn my Suicide Silence shirt for this. Maybe even gotten a Suicide Silence hat too. <laughs> oh man next time yeah that's what be uh, that guy yeah we gotta wear the band shirt at, at the show it's and that's how that's how people know that you're a real fan totally agreed man well good to see you brother yeah you too well tell me uh what what are you uh what are you personally and what is the band up to these days i know you got the new album coming out and stuff what's up with that yeah uh, we're dropping a brand new song uh from our new record the uh, first one from our record uh Let's see, today is the 25th. It's coming out on Wednesday, the 31st. So oh, okay. less than a week away, we're dropping the first song of our new record that we've been working for quite some time on. So we're all we're all stoked that we're finally doing shit that we want to do. It's crazy how long it takes to, to do that. Well, yeah, tell me, <laughs> tell me what you mean by that. Oh, uh, you know, just, I mean, behind the, uh, behind the scenes stuff, it's been really... Uh, high pressure oh, right. for, for probably uh, obvious reasons. And it took a long time to get the band back on track uh, from, I mean, you're talking from Mitch to the self-titled and uh, really re rebuilding the band back to where uh, it was uh, most importantly, musically and us as people, it took, it took a long time. So we're all excited to actually, I'm excited that I'm, I'm actually putting on a record that like I, I back, you know, do you feel like you put some records out that you didn't back? Oh, of course. Yeah. Uh, that was uh, our last one, actually. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's true. I, I mean, I didn't think it was bad. Like, what, 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 what did you, what are you not happy with about it? It's, uh, which is, I mean, this is like the beauty of, you know, hanging out with, with you, Finn, and having the opportunity with podcasting and long form conversations. Cause you can't really explain this kind of stuff long form to like the masses. It's really tough. But uh, behind the scenes, that was definitely like the worst the band has ever been. And uh, maybe too, like the musically, uh, I'm, I'm sure, because a lot of people like, like that record. Uh, yeah, that's and, good. And, and we're talking about becoming a hunter. But uh, I don't know, it, it was just missing that secret sauce. You know, yeah, like I mean, you that, guys had that's some, something. Some tough stuff going on, you know, behind the scenes and whatnot. Oh, yeah, totally. Like we're trying to recover from. Uh, the self titled and other members, it's like a family, you know, everyone's going through life and at their own pace, de dealing with their own shit could be relationships or obviously that was a massive uh, backlash and some people took it harder than others. And, you know, I mean, for that record, yeah, I mean, our drummer was in rehab. <laughs> it's just right. like, just, I mean, that record barely came out. And also, I mean, producers not really putting their all into it. It's it, it it the stuff like that happens. You, and you do, your, do your best to make it sound and feel like the best that it can. And finally, we got through all the shit and uh, put out songs and uh, about to put out a song that I'm well, finally like, oh, this is what I've been wanting the band to sound like since 2008. Yeah, I mean, it, this is definitely the best shit you guys have done in a decade. And it really does feel like the band is sort of rediscovered you know the fire in a way that most bands when they've been through what you guys have been through it's very rare for a band to like find that again and like i heard this stuff you know at uh morgoth's house and i was like holy shit this is good thanks finn yeah i mean i mean if any other deathcore band went through a fraction of the stuff we went through they would all fail guaranteed yes absolutely guaranteed because you're you're forced to really go I, I i'd say this every fucking conversation but so true i try not to get spiritual but when no please do because one thing people should know is you're a much more thoughtful guy than maybe a lot of people realize so please do appreciate that well i mean when you go through a low which was i mean again i'll say it a lot of times but that was purposely done purposely done i mean that was that was like that was a, a big reset for me personally as the band. Um, and I think I'm on my toilets already, but if we do this for the self-titled, our fifth record, it's so the seventh and eighth and 10th record sound how I wanted the sound because we needed like a fucking right. reset, a whole reset. And I don't care 
what I have to lose, my sanity, money, I threw, I, I threw all that shit away just to start over and rebuild the uh, music. Like I, 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 I hear it inside my body. And then when you, when you have a career and you're going through a low, I'm talking about a low. Uh, I mean, you guys were what? in the shit for a long time. Oh yeah, years, years, like, years. The better part of ten years. To- totally. And when you're at that low, you're forced to. It's not hype anymore. It's not like right. it's, it's, it's not about money anymore. It's not about anything else. Like it's like it's truly about the music, and you're forced to go deep. And that's what and that's what separates uh, Suicide from all the other deathcore bands. We didn't have a band like us to listen to because it was us. Right. <laughs> and like and that and that was it. So that shit back in the day came from it was it's a sound of my body. Right. It's it's my soul. I mean, I, I'm not a singer, so I struggle. I don't know how to put feelings into uh, words. So I guess what we did, uh, me and Mitch combined, like we, we 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 turned feelings into sounds, and that's what you know. Then you have you know demos and EPs sure. and 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 the cleansing uh, and, and then et cetera. So getting well, back a lot of people that, might say that, but when I listen to Suicide Silence, you know that that's what I responded to with that old stuff. Is like I really did feel that there was so much like energy and aggression in that music mm-hmm. that you really you can just feel it thank you yeah, it's not true uh, of most cool. bands you know and i feel that with this new stuff again thank you yeah uh it's, it's just so funny like like it it takes years years of just going through the gutter and re- rebuilding for someone to hear 10 seconds of a song and be like oh that's good <laughs> it takes yeah, it's like it's what it took it's to true. get to that point, dude. That fucking five, ten seconds. Like someone being, like, oh, they're fucking cool. Like, let me buy a shirt. Like that took <laughs> years of behind the scenes of me, like fixing everything that 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 was broken, that uh, and really getting Suzanne's back to being Suzanne's. And what's crazy is that like you really can. It doesn't even take ten seconds to be able to tell. It takes like yeah, true, two true. seconds. Very, isn't very that crazy? True. Yeah. Yeah, it's weird. And you it's, can't fake it. There's nothing you can do. Like it's if no. it's not there, it's not there. No. And if it's there, no. you can tell just instantly. Totally. Yeah. It's uh it's it's so crazy. Like and 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 we go back talking about having the music have that secret sauce that you can't really put a word to it. You you just feel something the moment like you hear it in that first two seconds. You know, that took that took a long time. So I'm stoked for people actually uh hear what we've been doing. It's cool. Yeah, I'm excited. And I think that's been the reaction from everybody that I have seen. Uh, everyone says the same thing. Like, wow, they're back. I mean, not that the other stuff was bad. It was good. But I get it, it, was yeah. ju- it was just missing that little extra something, you know, and you hear it. And, you know, yeah. to your point, you know, maybe you had to go through all this horrible shit because the fact of the matter is, at least for this kind of music, you know, that's what fuels it a lot of times. Absolutely. And this was the advice I got from Ross Robinson when we actually did that record. And the thing that separates another thing that separates us from the rest of the bands in our genre, if if I get any kind of advice from like someone I admire or or when we ask ourselves the tough questions, we're dumb enough to do it. <laughs> we will we will apply what we learned and like you that scary feeling that comes up is like shit, we we, we got to do this. I remember like halfway through our record, I asked Ross as a fan, because we, we were talking about corn, a slip mod and all, yeah. all that stuff. And I try not to bug him about it, but I was like, <laughs> Hey, you're paying him for it. You're allowed. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. There you go. I, I, I paid Ross Robinson to hang out with me. That's right. <laughs> um, I asked him like, you know, what's, what's it going to take? Like, what will it take for a band to get back to that thing? Like to those records that people love and, and to or or to rebuild their their band and he said give it all away and i was like we that's what we did yeah <laughs> money e- everything money uh, i was living in venice beach this sounds really bougie but you know we were i was you know we were, we were doing well we uh, we get this to, to be able to do this and get paid money for it is fucking crazy yeah you know, I mean, I remember hearing back, you know, back in the day in high school, like, oh, I mean, like, you know, r- records don't sell or you, you don't ever make money doing this. And then we put out a record that sells a ton of fucking records. And then we're getting paid. People are buying merch for a hot topic. You it's guys like, were doing crazy merch business. Crazy. Back it, in the day. It, it was crazy. And then to take all that 
that you worked for. Also, we're also we're talking about post Mitch too to recover from that, and it's still, uh, it's still recover from that. I mean, that money went away quick. People stopped. Buy- I mean, people stopped buying merch. Uh, people stopped buying tickets to the shows, and then I went from Venice Beach and I came back here when I was born and raised in Corona. Not that I don't like living here. I love it. It's, I mean, it's where I'm born and raised, but you know. I didn't have any sure. money. It was gone. And then I, I came back here and then obviously some members take that harder I mean, than at others. At least it's not Barstow. <laughs> oh, well, yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm pretty lucky to be in a cool, cool small town. And I'm also lucky that the things I love are cheap. I love pizza and beer, dude, and friends. And friends are free. And uh, yeah, just we just got, I mean, I applied what he taught me. I'm like, okay, like we got to start over. That's it. Right. And uh, we we did it. You know, bands say it all the time, oh, this record's going to be different. Or like, we fucking threw out the wor- rule book. And but blah, you blah, guys blah, really blah. did it. Heard it all before. They never fucking do it. Right, right. N- none of them do. Right. None of them do. We we, we did. And yeah. uh, we, obviously, we got shit for it. But uh, it's- I still, I respect that you guys did it. You know, like, Thanks, it's, it's not the album I would personally choose to listen to. But of I course. respect that you guys did it. <laughs> I do. Thank you. Like, cause like you said, like people say they're going to take it all. We're, you know, we, th- we just went, we're going to reinvent ourselves. Rah, rah, and I'm like, Oh, it sounds the same except sounds slower, same. you know, yeah. but you guys sounds really same. fucking did something super unexpected and different. And I respect that. Thank you, man. And it just stems from, it just stems from knowing who you are. You know, I know, I know who I am. I'm a nineties new metal kid. I'm a rhythm guitar player. I don't go past the first two frets. I'm right here, chug, chug, <laughs> drum low up. That's just that. That's who I am, and I knew, and I knew that if we were gonna start over, like I'm just gonna going back to who I am, like really trying to find that to make so the music is. I will say, I think if you guys put that album out now, it would have been received a lot better because now mm-hmm. everyone loves Deftones and you know rah rah all that shit. Yeah, it's crazy. Um, and you know that was only that was five years ago, right? That was 2017. Uh, yeah, I think. Uh, yeah. Yeah. But that was before the Deftones hype was real. And like, I, I feel like yep. people would like that album better now. You know, same. I mean, you guys have always been out of the curve. You were adding those new metal elements and stuff like on the Black Crown. When mm-hmm. remember that was 2012, right? 2011. Yes. Yeah. Um, 2012. And it was not cool to be into new metal then in the deathcore scene. No. Um. So, you know, you guys have consistently been willing to take those chances that other people haven't you could have just made no time to bleed again and that would have been fine but you guys took a chance you took another chance of self-titled and that's one thing i've always really respected thanks finn yeah we've always kind of been like the risk taking band since like day one like we're talking like here garage days like writing demos or going to shows you always want okay how can we stick out how can we be ourselves um okay this band's doing this so we're gonna do the opposite it's always it's always kind of been been that way you know sometimes you know you're you have the cleansing and uh, it's a big success and sometimes you'll take a risk and people stop buying your record. You know, it's just, you get like right. these hits and, you know, we, I, I always swing. I swing and, yeah. uh, people, and, and when, when you connect, you hit a home run, people, oh, wow, well, fucking cool, man. But then when you fucking miss, people, everyone will forget about you quick. All, all your history, people will forget about you. Uh, everything that, that you've done or anything. And yeah. it's, it's not, it's not just music. It's like, the entire industry, the uh, industry, the uh, bands that you inspired and influenced that don't fucking talk about it because they're not honest. Right. I mean, they all, they will be, they will forget about everything. Oh, you know, SS is done. They're, they're washed up. Guards is washed up. And I, I've heard it all. And just like, you know, positive stuff, like anything negative I felt or heard from someone in the industry, a label, a manager, a band. I remember everything, everything. And, uh, you know, when you're at a low, people fuck disappear right. because you are not cool anymore. You're, you're not cool to hang around with. You're not like, you're not the hype band anymore. But th- there was a few people, man, in the industry or bands that stuck by us. And that is invaluable. That is invaluable to, to know who was, who are your real friends in this fucking crazy thing, you know, and have, yeah. they have some bands, you know, stick up for us. I mean, George from Cannibal Corpse, dude, like he was vocal about, you know, he's, he's he stuck by with us. He was really cool. And like that shit, like 
when I'm around him now, it's like, that, that's a priceless friend. And bands in our genre, you know, talk shit. And right. I, I remember, I remember all that. And then now we're out now, we're, I guess it's so weird to say, but now we're like, we're like the up and coming where we're like getting you back the to elder where we, statesman now. And, you know, and now, you know, people are coming back around. It's like, yeah. you know, obviously you're, you're cordial and I'm thankful to be coming back and have be welcomed in this second wave of heavy music and a death core genre. I'm very fortunate and lucky that the band is here. I mean, I'll be lying if I said I, I, was, I wasn't surprised. I mean, the, the amount of sacrifices we took to stay here. And, you know, people came back, the bands and stuff like that. But, you know, it's, it's, it's right here. Well, you don't seem like a bitter person, though, despite all of that. No, no. I mean, I mean, my thing, which it might rub people off the wrong way, but I want this shit, especially, I mean, obviously I'm in a deathcore band, so I have a soft spot for it, but I want this genre to get big. I want to bring this shit up as high as possible. I don't give a fuck what band does it. If it's us, Lorna Shore, I don't fucking care. Any, any band that gets big, uh, you have Spirit Box doing cool shit. Sure. I saw them last night. I'm like, if a heavy band gets big, great. And uh, there's this shit behind the scenes, dude. It just fucking pisses me off. There's like this big dick contest constantly going off. Like, right. oh, like they won't play with this band or like the logo has to be bigger on the flyer. <laughs> they fuck, they got a cool headline. They won't. They have a headline. It's just like, dude, it's all this bullshit. And that it's such a pet peeve for me, dude. My 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 pet peeves were that. Uh not building a genre and dishonesty in music. Those are my pet fucking peeves, dude. And it's you know, it's comes mostly from like the older heads. Like the older, I guess you could say it's deathcore bands, maybe, but the newer bands coming up are pretty there's a camaraderie and it's really cool to see them helping each other, which is which I I wish I had that bat you know, back in the day, but everyone was just trying to one up each other. And, you know, so, so, so my thing is I want to use myself and the band name on this upswing to like, I want to bring up as many bands as, as possible. You know, we could do a cool tour, a cool fucking tour package. And I mean, do it great. But man, these fucking, some of these bands, you just prevent that from happening. It fucking pisses me off. Well, it does feel to me like Deathcore is in a place now that reminds me of like 2009 MySpace days, you know, with Lorna yeah. Shore and Slaughtered Prevail and a lot of yeah. the other bands that are, you know, kind of bubbling up. And it feels mm -hmm. like there's kind of energy and stuff that hasn't been there for a long time since you guys really were the ones who made that happen the first time. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah, it's, uh, it's always kind of shocking. Like a lot of which is a story I've been telling pretty often now, but like a lot, of, it was my, it's my fault. Like I did a pretty horrible job, you know, running the band behind the scenes, you know, back in the day, we did a pretty terrible job at telling our story, you know, so no one really knows like the history of us or how we started. And now, then you, now you're, you're in a point where like, no one really knows where the dead core scene started, you know, right. because we, we never talked about it, you know, but, uh, man, well, nobody, like those, also nobody cared about it back then like nobody wanted to know about that it. the too. press the media they didn't give a shit you know because it was that just too. kids in the ie doing this thing that nobody else really understood or liked mm -hmm. it was very like n very unwelcome in the metal media back then oh yeah it's so, so like it's who so would bizarre. you even told <laughs> yeah true <laughs> right it's not like yeah. krang wanted to talk about it in 2007 yeah yeah, yeah you're right it's, it's so it's so fucking it's cool. I mean, that's obviously the goal, but to see a band's, you know, put out their first record now or a stream a song now and this gets fucking picked up like that and all these streams yep. and great press and there's this fan base on the welcome zone. I'm like, that's pretty fucking cool. That's awesome. You know, I mean, it's like shit. Like when we were playing Deathcore, there was no shows to play. Like it was, just, it was us. And luckily, uh, when, when I met Mitch, he like had a, a in at the Showcase Theater, uh, three miles down, which you don't know Showcase, it's a legendary venue here. Uh, he knew people that worked there, and uh, we have friends in a hardcore band, shout out to Gabe Ochoa, he, he uh, sang for a band called Bound on Blood. He started throwing us on all his shows, and that's kind of what started like us playing hardcore shows. And uh, there's no, we, we either play a death metal show or a hardcore show, and then out of nowhere, Jaffa or Cowboy came out, and we kind of both were like bubbling up at the same time. It was it was a really special time. But when we first came out, like we're talking demos EP days. I mean, I think we 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 talked about it already. But the 
copycats. Yeah. It's fucking. Whew. Right. Like, like nationwide, do you like, like it? Hundreds of them, not like five, it was nuts. like a hundred, maybe it was probably nuts. more than a hundred. <laughs> yeah. I mean, back then I was bitter about it. I was like, what, like, what the fuck is going on? But I mean, obviously that's, that stems from like insecurity or young. You don't like, you know, I, I could barely talk back then. <laughs> it's just, right. but, but now it's like, it's fucking really cool to see when I see a band, you know, do anything. I'm like, that's fucking sick. Holy shit. Look, look at what we did. That's fucking insane. But, but my beef with the bands back then. Uh, and a couple actually still do it uh, currently. The big bands are assigned, but uh, this weird thing, like a lot of them won't even give us props for it. It's so it's so weird. Like, and again, that goes back to my pet peeve, like dishonesty in music. When right. when what we do you, came, what do you mean? What do you mean by that? By dishonesty? When I mean when we first came out, like it was, we're talking twenty years ago. I mean, it was not cool to wear a corn shirt at a show. Right. That shit was not cool. I mean, you're, you're talking like, I mean, I literally got my head kicked in from like, for sure. know, being like being around the pit, like, like, like Harker kids look at that new middle kid and fucking come at me. It was it long was hair with cool. a slipknot shirt at a hardcore oh. show in the IE in the early two thousands. People big are going to no, fuck no. with you. Big, big no, no. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, uh, but you know, we did it. And the very little, anything we said, we're talking day one. We've always gave props to the bands that we were inspired by. Day one, no matter who it was, if it was a local band to uh, our hardcore band or bands like Corn and Slipknot, we were fucking so vocal about every band that we either, like, I personally ripped off or, like, you know, or, or were inspired by. And then, then we came out and they had the copycats, obviously. Like, there's this, this weird energy, like, so we're going to stand by each other you're not even going to talk about it right Su super strange and that's like that goes along with okay well why are you writing music that's because i go like okay this is happening what else are you not honest about i mean like if it you was know? me if if i was in a band and i ended up playing a show with you know the band that i obviously like copied i would go up to him and be like hey man i just want to say we love your band and we totally rip you guys off that that'll be sucking and i've done and the that other too. band would just <laughs> laugh and be like oh that's cool whatever yeah and we, and we and we could be close friends it'd be fucking cool i mean i i did that around here if there's right. a local band that I, I ripped off be like dude like i dude, i love i love this demo dude did this fucking break down and like right and we did that since right since the fucking get-go and you know that's how we became friends with bands like corn you know and slipknot like there was no one else talking about them Right. <laughs> so when they so when they they're around us, they're like, "Oh, these guys, you guys been fucking talking about us before anybody." And like gossip, good word also gets around quick, dude. That's right, quick. And bands will if you say something good about a band, it gets to him. You'll be surprised. It's fucking crazy. Yeah, it's true. And I will say, you know, um, I've been friends with people. You know, kind of we we've had mutual friends for a long fucking time. Yeah. And I've never heard anybody say anything bad about you guys personally, you know, in that entire, you know, 15 plus years, which wow. is rare, you know, it is, especially when we were drunk idiots for a while. So it's well, cool. We're not the it. only ones There's plenty of <laughs> drunk idiots out there. <laughs> uh, it's cool that, uh, that we, we didn't do anything that dumb out there. It's cool. It's, it's always cool to hear that, you know? Well, what, what do you hear from like the younger bands, you know, the, the Lorna Shores and, you know, other bands kind of making waves now, what do you hear from them when you cross paths with them? Uh, they actually give props, which is really cool. And, um, uh, they also do it publicly, which is, I think it's a big deal. It's really cool when like Lorna Shore, I mean, I mean, name it, dude, they'll like, I'll, you know, I mean, we watch it, you know, I'll watch them like YouTube stuff and they're, they're talking about our records. I'm like, damn, that's fucking cool guys. Thank you. You know, yeah. I mean, I mean, that is so simple. And then, you know, I talk about them as much as I can, you know, it goes, it goes both ways. And it's just cool to get like that, that honest respect, yeah. you know, it's, it's, it's all it is, you know, I mean, again, and I'm older, so it's, still, it's, it's kind of funny now. Like I'm just so different now. I mean, back in the day, I was so bitter and dumb about it, Like you know, fuck, fuck those guys. Fuck that band. But now it's like, you know, I, I want, I obviously want them to be successful if they want to be worried about it or not. But uh, same, same well, when, with the when, new band. When you're younger and you're not, you know, 
necess- you haven't like made it to the top of the mountain yet. You know, you're worried if, if someone else is succeeding, copying me, w- will that hold me back? You know, and that's a sure. reasonable thing to worry sure. about because sometimes there is a band that establishes a thing and then some other band comes along and copies them and ends up becoming more successful doing that. So, yes, you know, I, I don't think that that's uh, I think that's a natural thing to feel threatened by. Yeah. And that stems from uh, that just means like, oh, shit, I, I got to work harder or that that will if you're bitter, that kind of exposes like your lack of worth ethic right. and you having to evolve. Right. It, basically what it is, you know, I'm lucky to be older, not as dumb as I was back then and kind of have like this look back and oh, that's that's why I was like that. I was afraid to evolve. I was afraid to work harder. Right. And I was afraid these bands were going to take what I had. Well, it's just it was fear. It was just me being, in, you know, a bitch and like, oh, shit, I was just young and afraid to work harder and evolve with the times. And right. uh, I wish I also, you know, we, you, like, you look back and like, man, I wish I you know, had this perspective back then. I could have worked harder back then and had a clear head and stuff like that. But, you know, obviously that's how we learn. Right. Yeah. I mean, that's that's how it works. Well, I mean, what have you learned from the last 10 years, which seems like from the way you talk about it, it seems like it has not been an easy 10 years. No, it's been it's been the worst, literally like the worst. I mean, obviously, again, I always say I'm, I'm lucky to be in a band. I don't I won't want to do anything else. But I mean, there there is a reason why we're still here. You know, after all that, we're still I guess we're getting the buzz again. Like we're kind of reliving the hype of the early days. It's really cool to experience again. But that came with a fat price tag. And what I learned the past 10 years, uh, one was communication, big, uh, having communication with um, just in general, like friends and family, but obviously that goes, goes with the uh, band members, communicating, listening. Uh, I don't have very many strengths as a person, so I'm proud of this one, but one of my strengths as a person is I seek out conflict. I seek out confrontation i'm not talking like fighting but like confrontation like i will i am not afraid to have the uncomfortable conversation well you don't you don't bullshit yourself from no. what i no. can tell no and the bands that who knows maybe these guys are our competition bands are listening to me right now and but i hear about your band and i hear about how you don't have these conversations so you're far behind and the thing about having these conversations is everything is better yeah everything is better and Unfortunately, these conversations only happened like two years ago, and I wish it was sooner. Uh, the biggest regret I have in my life was it, not hanging out with Mitch or not having these conversations with, with Mitch. And maybe, you know, things could have um, been different. But mean, what meaning what? Like what kind of conversations would you would you have had? Uh, she was just going so fast. I mean. This way she kind of we slowed down a little bit and just had you know how how you doing man you know are 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 you cool and it was just it was a rough time because uh mitch you he, he fucking went i mean his stage presence really speaks for itself and yeah his, his to this day unmatched up. in the genre unmatched. nobody there's nobody else no no there's like there's there's a far far away second yep. <laughs> they, but uh that dude was fucked up man he needed take a break for a while and have neck surgery dude that dude was he, he was fucked up and i wish we uh we talked more and communicated more but you know we're we're you know mid-20s we, we don't have those communication skills yet i, I don't right. have like i'm not saying i'm a wise person by any means but i mean i i, I didn't have that perspective i have now back then but that's like a big regret i have that's something i learned uh, i just wish you know i communicated more with my band earlier as opposed to the last, you know, two years and uh, behind the scenes stuff. Like uh, I was a big guy on like the music first It's get rich or die trying. This it has to be about the music and like the music, the music. And what I did wrong was I completely ignored the business side hmm. and it fell apart. And uh, what I learned recently uh, with the next like, last you know two years was when you start rebuilding the business start paying attention to numbers and growing up the music got better and i was so wrong about Mm. that because i thought it was gonna 
opposite. Or if I get too involved with the business side, then that's going to affect the music. But I was so wrong. The opposite happened. Everything started locking in, like the band, the guys are more stoked to be here. Uh, not that we're getting paid on the money or anything, but like just things like things started to line up, paying attention to numbers and uh, getting clarity with with our business. Well, it's not good for the art to be like, where the fuck did all our money go and it's stress not. about paying the rent? No, because stress will make you not write good music when you're right. Old. <laughs> it's just like like the, you, you're just working uh, towards something to make, you know, get some clarity. And like, you know, we we all became better friends. Better friends because we started paying attention to the business, which I personally took over because it's weird to say, you know, I own the band. It's right. weird. I'm, uh, a lot of people don't know this, but I'm, I'm the founder and Mitch came in shortly after. So, you know, I ignored the business my, my whole career, my whole career. So, you, been, I mean, you had managers and business managers. Do, did you not listen to those people or were they not really, did they not care as much as they should have or what, what happened there? It's tough because um, someone kind of needs to be driving, you know, and it can't be someone else of the band, no matter how good right. they are. Nobody's going to give a shit as much as you do. No, no one. Um, even people that love you, uh, they, yep. it's, no one's going to give a fuck more than you. Ultimately, they're going to be like, man, Garza's wiling, but I tried to tell him he didn't want to, yeah, know, whatever. Basically, yeah. And um, yeah, I mean, everyone, you know, just making a simple decision of how to do something or just things weren't lining up. Things kept falling apart. And then, uh, yeah, I just, you know, I guess I could say I grew up and I, I almost quit the band and, and then a, a friend talked, talked me out of it. And then I just had these conversations with, with, with the band members and all right, you know, uh, I'm, I'm ready to grow up and basically I'm done being afraid of, you know, the business and I, I, mean, I took but, over. I, but but yeah. think about how much fire you've been through now in so many different ways. Mm. Prices. You know, and if, and yeah. if that shit didn't stop you, like what could and COVID, like what could oh, yeah. be what what could the world possibly throw at you at this point? Oh, dude. Yeah, I mean, oh, I, I forgot I forgot the quote, but like you know, like the worst thing you've been through is the worst thing that you've been through. So like when you go to something like losing your singer. And a lot of people don't know, but like, um, Mitch crashed on Halloween night for some reason. I didn't drink. I was just, oh, I'm gonna go get a, get a burrito. And I'll stay here. I'm, I'm going out tonight. You know, I, I get the call, the call from our manager, and uh, it happened. He crashed. I was like, shit. I just no thought. I went straight to the to the hospital in Irvine, straight there. Uh, other band members did not show up. I was the only one there. Uh, it was our manager. You didn't know his condition yet, or you huh? did. You didn't know his condition when you got the call. I didn't know it was that serious. I knew that it was serious, but like not that serious. Yeah. And then it was me, our manager, and uh, Mitch's dad, Kip, and uh, we were getting updates. It was like a, a span of like eight hours. It, it it was a while, and every update we got, it was like bad. Like I, I still have a, a vivid memory of like a doctor coming out with the scrubs and seeing blood on, on the scrubs. And like he was, Man. Mitch was in a in surgery. They were trying to sh uh, save his life. And then they, they did the surgery and he was still put under and they allowed us to go out, go in there and, you know, say hi to him. It's like seeing your best friend like that. Uh, that was, I mean, uh, technically that was the last time I saw him alive. Because he was, and to see someone like that, that you, I just saw him a week prior here, like, bullshitting and had been, you know, buddies. And seeing someone fight for their life like that, that's the anything The last time I saw my mom, she got, she had like a brain, like infection thing. The yeah. last time I saw her, I wasn't supposed to see her. They were like wheeling her through an elevator and her head was all like cut open and her tongue was like this out of her mouth. And it was just the weirdest thing to Fuck. see, you know, probably a similar, it's I'm just sorry, the weirdest, man. it's just the weirdest thing to see someone like that. That's so sad to see them as like, uh, yeah, to see them just not themselves and realize like, wow, this, like, they might not be this, this might not be okay. That's so, that's so sad, man. Yeah. And, and, and that, that stays with you forever. Yeah, exactly. It's, that's like it's burned into my brain of just like, yeah, I only saw her for like half a second. 
and it's just mm-hmm. like burned into my brain. Yeah, it's just it's it's fucking nuts, dude. And then similar part uh, to your experience was like you're not you don't know until you're there, but like you're allowed to be there. So when uh, we're just hanging out with them, and then like it's like a fucking movie, man. Like the lights go crazy, and like the doctors are freaking out, and then you're just like, like what like, what the hell's going on? And then a doctor goes up to uh, M- Midge's dad and says, "I'm sorry." I was like, and me and our manager was like, "What the f-? like what what we mean sorry what?" And obviously, he died. So when you see your literally like the singer of your band die in front of you, you can't control your thoughts during th- th- those moments. But the first thought that popped in my head was, "This band's not stopping ever, ever," and. Um, I'm not, I will never put my words in his mouth or what Mitch would have wanted. Uh, it's so fucking disrespectful when people say anything like what Mitch would have wanted to get the fuck out of here, dude. Um, I will never do that. Oh, but all I have is that if it was me, I would want Mitch to keep going at any means necessary. That, that's all I have. That's literally all I have. If it was me, I would want Mitch to keep going. No matter what, just go, go through the bullshit, go through the, the hate, go through all that. I, I will want him to keep going. So that's, that's all I have. And uh, obviously there's other spiritual side of that. You know, I feel like he's still in the band and helping us make those choices, you know? So, yeah, and that's why we're still here. I mean, it's, um, I'm trying to use the right word here, but it's, uh, you know, when, when you guys talk about that you know that was 10 years ago now almost uh almost like next month Mm -hmm. and it's still clearly like really you know um i don't know like it feels fresh in a way like it's still with you you know it's very fresh still you don't anyone that's lost um you know been like you know like like if you're a family member or, or friend uh a loved one like it doesn't go away, dude. And like, some people in bands are not really friends. Oh, no. No. <laughs> yeah, do, you, do you know what I mean? Like, but it's, I mean, it's, it's True. different. Like True. obviously it's going to affect anybody if someone in the band dies, but like you guys mm. were actually friends, which is not all. It might sound weird to say, but lots of people in bands aren't necessarily friends. Very, very true. Yeah. He was, um, yeah, he was my best friend, my, my brother. That's uh, as cheesy as it sounds, you know, Suicide Silence is me and Mitch. It's it's our two two souls together. I know it sounds cheesy, but it's just I, this is what, what what it is. And uh, lost the face of the band and a family member. Yeah, I mean everything at once. Everything at once yeah. gone. You know everything that you thought reality was when you were a twenty six year old kid. It's just gone out out the window. So when you go, for, so when that happens with with the band, and then. Oh, yeah, self-titled that I mean the backlash of that, I mean again, when we go from Mitch, everything else is like right. cake, dude. I mean, I understand people struggle during COVID. I understand that. Um, but for us, I mean, again, when I compare it to other things, like COVID for us, it's like, okay, I'm just wait till shit comes back. I'm good. Right. You know, I I've, right. I've been at that point, the self title's already done its work. We've been broke for quite a few years i'm like, okay I, I mean what's another couple <laughs> more years this. yeah i i i am sad i, I am loving music right now I'm, right. I'm down to you know put in a little bit more time and uh yeah so just uh everything after that is really easy it's true it's yeah lows in a band uh I'm, I'm lucky to be alive to even have these you know tough conversations with business managers or our band and make sure everyone's good. I'm lucky to wake up and feel stress or pressure from yeah. um, anything uh, behind the scenes with, with the band. I'm, I'm lucky to experience that. So, you know, it's kind of tough. Like I, I say this a lot. It's kind of like, I feel weird when I have a bad day. I just don't know how to feel. Have, I just don't know how to feel a bad day. Cause I just go right to like, shit, I'm alive. I'm sure. alive, dude. Yep. And, uh, you know, I'm sure Mitch didn't know that was gonna be his last day. You know, we don't know. Absolutely, I think about it literally every day. I think about it every minute. You know, like with you know, I think about it with my wife. You know, sometimes I'm ever feeling a little crabby. I'm like, well, what I'm gonna choose my words right now mm-hmm. 
knowing that this might be the last time I ever talked to her and I, God willing, it won't be, but it might yeah. be, Yeah, you know, and I want to choose my words and actions right now with that in mind. Yeah, man. Like, true. I mean, I think we actually have a similar thought process where, I mean, if your chick goes out driving, sometimes a thought pops in my head. It's like, man, that would right. be so Just tragic. Go to the grocery store. It could it's happen. So, so fucking tragic, dude. Yeah. I mean, you want, you know, you can give him a hug and a kiss, you know, it's like shit. I, I mean, there's no, there's no guarantee, you know? Absolutely. Well, you don't have to answer this. Uh, cause I, I don't know sort of where it stands, but, um, uh, you have parted ways with Alex, which, yes. uh, I was bummed about just because I'm such a big fan of his playing. Like I think Same. his sound is like such an important part of the band and the new stuff without him does sound great, mm -hmm. but, um, you know, his like groove and the sort of like, you know, punk kind of feel that he had was a big part of the band. Um, mm -hmm. What's it? What What was, you know, wh what are your thoughts on parting ways with him? It was tough, man. It was really tough because, you know, you, had, you just have so much history with with somebody, you know, so when you make a decision or something happens, you just you just have all this history. It's not like a very, it's not like a decision, right? You know, and then, um, unfortunately, the only thing I can say is I actually got why bands will talk about splits. Sure. I was like, oh, you're talking like kind of deep level stuff. You want to put good things out and, and out there for, for, for people to see and read. But I, I kind of got it. In that moment, oh shit! That's why you know this band that doesn't talk about losing their drummer, right? Or 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 that it's like it's you just gotta move on. Yep. You know, I mean, anyone. It's kind of one one of those things. Anyone that's in the circle, or that's you know been been around us, know exactly what happened. Yeah. Anyone that's been around us on the tour bus or uh, the band <laughs> uh, or uh, around here, they they know exactly what happened and um. And also, like, a lot of, it's funny, like, we always have those conversations in this room. Like, uh, a lot of band members have left, been kicked out uh, in this room. We have, we've had girlfriends in here, storm, storm out, pissed off, uh, kind of seeing it all in, uh, in, in this one room. And um, so we've always been that band. We, we meet each other in person face to face and we talk it out is uh, i i n never wanted to be a cliche band i always like you know when shit comes out online and then they and then like there's the dramas on online and then like oh i found out like when i went to fucking this website that, that this happened i'm like what are these guys not talking to each other right. like that's so right. that's so bizarre and like uh, when someone finds out they got kicked out of the band from reading it on fucking blabbermouth yeah, so it's it's so strange, and uh, definitely wasn't that way. We, we we talk it out, and then there there is the outcome. And uh, I don't know. I just don't understand like the hate or that you might have for someone, or like, or you might dislike them. So, but I just man, like all those shows, all those airplanes, all those days traveled and years you used to be friends. Like, out of respect, man, you gotta just do it face to face. Right. Face to face, dude. And um I just don't respect people, uh, men and women that just don't look that partner in the face. Give them the respect at the time. Handle they your put business. And hand and ha handle the business, dude. Yep. I mean, pe people deserve uh FaceTime, you know. And uh, I just never got it. I just never got how, you know, you just can't sit down and talk talk things out, you know, then have have the outcome. I just don't get it. Well, it does seem like, I mean, I didn't know you back in the day, but it does mm. seem like you have grown tremendously from all this stuff. And I personally find that really inspiring because there's a lot of people, you know, you go through shit like this and it's going to either make you or break you. Mm -hmm. And, uh, yeah. I, I, you know, I, I, your music is not necessarily, um, you know, it's not like a band like Terror where you just like literally write lyrics saying how you feel about a certain thing. You know, it's sort of yeah. between the lines. 
Yeah. But I feel like there is still something that comes through in the music that's going to help people. Yeah, same. You know, I mean, feelings don't don't go away. Right. You know, it's like you like you still, you know, write riffs and then people will connect with it because, you know, it's coming from the same place. You know, I'm not, you know, I'm not doing anything different now than I was when I was a little kid. I'm still like the same loser kid I was. I'm now and I was back then. I'm just playing guitar. I'm just playing what I think sounds cool. I'm playing what I think feels heavy. And I'm, I'm, do, I'm doing the same shit. <laughs> it's just, and like what the, the ultimate, like you don't, actions speak louder than words. And to mm-hmm. me, the ultimate message is the fact that you survived the last 10 years and then are coming out with this album that sounds fucking awesome. Like mm-hmm. that sends such a powerful message without having to say it. Yeah, I mean, I guess without trying, that was just the goal. You know, you have to, if you're going to go through that stuff, you, it really shows, it shows who you are for better or or for worse. I didn't really understand the term growing pains until like. <laughs> until you I, felt them? <laughs> yeah, until you felt them. And then like your these things are, your anger is manifesting in public. <laughs> yep. And, uh, and then I learned from like psychology books, like what exactly that is, like for you to grow as a person, like a part of you inside has, has to die. And so it's like, it's like this, you have this conflict inside your, your body. That's like, Oh shit. Like you're, you're changing. And then it's like basically gasping for air mm-hmm. and then it'll manifest. And for me, you know, this is a team. These, these are demons in, in my closet that I'll share, share with you guys. But you know, my, my demons are like, I'll have public outbursts every once in a while, I'm not talking about every week. I'm, you know, yelling at my girlfriend, but like, like this, I've been with her for three years and I've had two. I just, um, before that, maybe I had a few inside maybe, but, uh, and then she really, you know, she obviously still with me. So she's like, well, what, like, what, what was that? And but you we, only get so many of those. Yeah, oh yeah. You, you you only get a couple, dude. Like you yeah. only get a, and it has to be for a reason. And then right. those are growing pains. And like a part of me just didn't want to die. And it, it's a part of me inside is just like, because fear is a very real thing. Sure. It's a very real thing. I'm just afraid. Uh, maybe to be honest, maybe I'm still afraid of uh, success to take the next step. You know, I'm, I'm a host of a podcast. That's fucking terrifying. I'll get, I'll get high as fuck. And I like, just think about it. I'm like, what are you doing? <laughs> oh my God. Stop it. Stop doing that. I mean, but you've played <laughs> huge shows. So why would you be afraid of talking on a podcast? Oh, dude, it's terrifying. Terrifying. dude. Uh, we had Glenn Benton on. Yeah. I uh, saw that. That's fucking amazing. It's fucking nuts. I mean, I love that you did that because Deicide is a band that, it's weird. People don't really talk about them that much now, which is yeah. crazy. Legends, dude. Legends. Legends. Was... People do not understand. They were the shit in the nineties. They were the mm-hmm. top fucking dogs yep. in death metal. Yep. They are they are right behind Cannibal, like being like the top selling death metal band of all time. Right. Literally. They were bigger than Cannibal at one point. Mm-hmm. Yes, DSI, and more, man. way more hype. Like yeah. DSI was the hypest band of death metal, hands down, in like ninety three, ninety four. Yeah, I mean, if you want to talk about extreme, listen to those first three records, dude. Yeah. I mean, you're in the early '90s. I mean, and to your point, I love that you put him on because a lot of your audience, I mean, I'm sure they know who Deicide is, mm-hmm. but like they may not really appreciate it. And I love that you did that. That was really cool to see. Yeah, it was cool. I kind of don't know why he was so cool. I didn't know. I didn't know what to expect. I was extremely nervous. That was by far the most nervous I, I ever been. Um, I look over across the table is fucking Glenn Benton. Right. And yeah, and my, and my butthole assist puckered so <laughs> tight, dude, because it, it doesn't want, because my body is stopping from shit from coming out of my own body. Cause I want <laughs> to shit my pants. So it was like, I was, I was so nervous, dude. I was just trying to keep my composure and give, you know, I mean, my goal with this stuff is like, I want, I wanted people to see another side of Glenn. I, right. I want I want people to see Glenn, and I think I hope that was accomplished. I, I haven't watched it yet, um, but I am excited too. He's a fucking cool guy, man. But yeah, I'm sure I'll get high uh, this weekend and think about it and be like, "Oh my god, you're the fucking worst. <laughs> you suck. You suck." <laughs> but uh, but yeah, it's crazy. It's fucking. It's crazy. Yeah, fear is a real thing. I have to close uh close all scenery. Really. Fear is well, a real it, thing. It does seem like you um. It seems like you do put 
conscious effort into like, um, I guess I would say self-improvement, which most people don't. I wish I could give some aspiring advice with that stuff or experiences, but I don't. It's, I mean, it was Mitch that really made me, um, I completely stopped doing drugs, cold turkey. I mean, th- I'm, I'm, I'm done with that. And then I com- dramatically cut back on drinking. Dramatically, I wasn't getting blacked out drunk every day anymore. I'm like, all right, I didn't get a hold of this shit. It was, f- and then what's terrifying, <laughs> again, I, I don't have anything inspiring to say, but uh, I was, what's terrifying is like, you, you get out of one fog, then you get into like another one. Yeah. And another one. And it's all like this shit you just weren't, you didn't deal with your whole life. It's just you're constantly dealing with it. And like you're talking, you know, it's boring stuff, but like, you know, I got to go to the gym. You got to, sure. I got to meditate and then think, think about my breath for 10 minutes every day. I got to read books. I, was, I read books then every fucking day. I, I put these, if, whether it was Tony Robbins, shout out Tony Robbins, uh, or Tony Robbins is legit. People he is, can dude. laugh. You might think he's corny. It's the real fucking deal. He is, dude. Um, and after, you know, you, you feel the same and then a few years pass and you get these little sprints of like changing. Like you're, you feel like, you know, why, why, why am I doing this? Why, why, why am I doing this? And I don't know where like he's, people see you like, what's up, dude? Like you, you look, you look different. It's so weird. But right. uh, I wish there is a more inspiring thing to say, but it was literally everyday conscious work of trying to reprogram my, my brain from whatever happened earlier on in my life that made me want to, you know, escape. Like it was, very, it was very, very few people ever do that. Crazy. Very, very fucking few people do that. That work. Well, I'm I'm lucky that uh, lucky that I get I get to do it. Um, more cheesy stuff. I'm lucky to have my my girlfriend of almost three years. You know, she's been really keeping me in line. Talk talk about like the uh, fast track. She made fine tunes. Hey, uh, you know, like your woman will say like like a comment. Hey, like you know, like like, like you do this. Yeah, <laughs> you know, and I'll uh, I turn into like a mini asshole. I'm like, what? Right. No, no, I don't. No, 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 like, no, fuck, no. I totally do. <laughs> All right, don't. And then like, and then and then you process it the fucking next day. You're like, okay, I'll, I'll fix it. You, you don't talk about it again. You just kind of fix it. Right. Yeah, that's uh, right. That's pretty much exactly what uh, she's really. She put me on like a fast track. Well, I was always kind of going there, just trying, but she really like fine tune things, and then, you know, this small things turn to big things. Like I would, you know. I would go to shows around here locally and I'd be kind of nervous for, for some reason, or like, or like hometown shows. She's like, like, you're a different person. We have a hometown show. I'm mm. like, shit, you're right. So we don't talk about it again. Cause I, 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 I just fix it. And then the next show we have in SoCal, I mean, it's different. I'm chill. I'm like, oh, it's, it's another show. We're fucking hanging out. Cool. We're like, yeah, they, they'll like say something and be like, I like, don't. <laughs> Like but actually you you do and then you fix it and it's like a little it's a little weird thing inside of you like a little insecurity or something that 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 you got to fix you know right it's so weird there's so many different kind of feelings that you have to process inside your body where you think you might process one thing but that'll open up another thing mm-hmm. and like little little things so fucking and, and it's tiring nuts. but you got to do the work you know I I think everybody yeah. hears that voice. The difference is like you're willing to listen to it, like to your point earlier mm-hmm. about uh, not avoiding confrontation with yourself. You yes. hear that voice and you're like, God damn it. The yes. voice might be right. I really don't want to deal with this, but I have to. Yes. Yes. Yeah. That stands from me saying that I don't have very many strengths, but that's that's one of them. You know, that's a pretty I, big one. I hope so. Yeah. It seems to be going good now. I mean, uh, seems to. uh Damn, there saved the band, you know, just getting these, you know, listening to my gut, uh, then applying it. Cause, you know, it's so fucking nuts to you. Like, there's other band members, there's four of the guys. They have their future wives and houses and kids that, that now we're talking about kids now. Right. Uh, I see people with, with the tattoos. Uh, there's people that are buying shirts now. Like, there's like, okay, we are lucky to have this second chance of, of life and being a band and now, you know, it's little stuff to you, but like, you know, our shit's in hot topic again. Like, right. I remember like seeing going on hot topic and like getting get that check and then, yeah. Oh wow, we're fucking hype. We're fucking cool. Now and then that shit going away for years. 
and people know and no one's buying your merch. And then I kind of out of nowhere, like you see people buying merch, and then we get an order from Hot Topic, and like like what the fuck? It's it's coming back, and we're so lucky that you know that that we get a it's a second chance. And uh, you know, I do put a lot of you know some conscious pressure on myself. It's all good. It's not bad. It's just good pressure to make sure things are online and make sure the because you know I don't want to let my I don't want to let the guys in the band down. I don't want to let their families down or my family down or my girlfriend down or like or the fans and and the, and the uh, that listen to the music and uh, have stuck bias for for uh, for so long. I don't I don't want to fuck fuck it up. Yeah. Cool. Well. I appreciate your time. I'll let you go, but uh, I'm excited to see uh, what happens to this album. I just, uh, I'm a huge fan and I'm really inspired by just, you know, how much, uh, you know, just by how much shit you guys have all been through and that you are still here going stronger than ever. So uh, happy to see it and uh, always happy to do whatever I can to help out. Thanks, fan. We're actually a big fans of you. It's crazy, huh? Well, I appreciate it. It's cool. weird. <laughs> it's I'll see you next bad. time you guys come through town. Yeah, everyone, a uh, new song on the 31st, a uh, few days. Uh, check out the podcast on YouTube, Cars of Podcast. Uh, thank you for listening and watching. Uh, Finn, you're badass. And I hope I hope I gave you a fucking sh- a juicy one. All right, cool. Talk to you soon. Thank <laughs> All right, you. See, see you guys Take later. Care.